afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. I'm currently in London, um, just opposite the Tate Modern, uh, down from St Paul's Cathedral, if you know where that is. Um, we've got people joining us from, um, I can see the US and Holland. Can I just remind everybody, please, to keep your mics muted so we don't pick up your background noises, so we don't have any animals, children, or maybe the odd motorbike, because that'll be me, because I'm near a busy road. Um, but if we could just keep our mics muted unless we're talking, um, that would be great. Um, it's sort of all about me today, which is quite unusual, because I do like to talk a bit, and Janet will probably tell you I do that, because Janet's from London. Um, as there's only a few of us here at the moment, um, would everybody like to just introduce themselves, because we're not a huge group at the moment, and just say who you are, and what your job is, and where you're from. Um, should we start with Emily? Hi, everyone. Um... I am also, I'm in New York City, so it's really noisy. The fire station's across the street, so I will be muting for the majority of the time when I'm not talking. Um, I um, am a nanny in New York City and a good friend of Helen's and everyone else. And um, it's it's been an interesting year, but I think it's been, you know, I think we have more to look forward to. And so I'm really excited about that. And I'm excited to join you all today. Marsha, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Marsha Hall. I'm the INA Executive Director. I've uh, been in the industry for over 20 years as a nanny before I was uh, before I um, brought my second child home. <laughs> and I now have three kids of my own. So always a nanny at heart, even though I'm not currently nannying right now. I'm really glad to be here from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> Sue? Um, hi, so I'm Sue Downey and I'm a nanny in Philadelphia and uh, a current board member and yeah, that's me. Thank you, Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm British, but I live in Amsterdam and my windows have just come open. Um, I own Holgate Nannies, which is based in Amsterdam, and I'm going to go and close my windows before the living room gets soaked from all of the rain. Uh, who do I have next? B. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm very new here. This is the first time that I joined to uh, any uh, meetings like this. Um, I live in Hungary and I work in Hungary. Uh, I run a nanny and babysitting agency in Budapest and we help uh, uh, experts in Budapest to find the right uh, nanny for them. Thank you. Uh, who do I see next? Janet. Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, I'm a nanny. Um, I'm just about to start a new position in January for two children in London, but I am actually based in Harrogate in North Yorkshire in the UK. So I'm up north currently. So um, but we'll be moving down south later on this year. Thank you. Rachel. Hi, everyone. Um, was there a question that we were supposed to answer or just a general introduction? Just, just say who you are, what you do and where you, where you are based. Okay, hi, I'm Rachel Lubin. I am a nanny and I live in Houston, Texas. I've been a nanny for about 10 years and I've been on the INA board for around four years. It's really good to see everyone this morning, this afternoon, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Jacqueline. Uh-oh. I almost show myself you don't want to see me this morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is Jacqueline Williams. I am an agency owner in um, outside of, of the Washington, D.C. area. We service Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Northern Virginia. And um, the name of my agency is A Mother's Prayer Placement. Glad to be here. Thank you. Erin. Uh, Good morning, everyone. My name is Erin, and I am a nanny and household manager in San Francisco, California, and very happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to read names. Meeches? 
Oh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Meches and I am uh, from Guatemala original, but I live in New York City and I am a nanny. Thank you. And last, Maria. Hi there, should be Mara. Good morning. Mara, all. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Good morning. I am from Brazil. I am here in the US for 20 years and I am a proud nanny for over 15. Right now, I work as a nanny and house manager in Los Angeles, California. So greetings to all of you from sunny California. Lovely. Thank you. Um, Teresa, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, hi, um, I'm Teresa and I uh, work as a nanny in Connecticut and take care of three kids and that's about it. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. So there's, I think there's 13 of us on here. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, so my name's Helen McCarthy. I am currently the second vice president of the INA, uh, which was a role that was um, given to me this early this, uh, no, in the summer when we had a meeting and that um, it wasn't originally that, but we had some board members step down and um, I was put into that position. Um, I've been on the board, this is my third term of being on the board. At current, I am the only um, board member who resides outside of the US. The rest of them are all in the US. So um, I love these Zoom calls, they're great. It means I don't have, travel's not an issue, except time's an issue because we have big time zones between us all. Um, but that's, you know, something. Um, I chair up a couple of the committees on the INA. I chaired the NOTI committee along with Emily and Sue. Um, and don't forget, um, you still have time to enter the Nanny of the Year um, nominations, get nominated. You can't nominate yourself, but get somebody who can. Um, they're not allowed to be a board member, but anybody else can nominate you for the Nanny of the Year. Um, this, for 2021, we're changing it up a bit. You don't have to attend a conference. Now, in past years of being the no a Nanny of the Year nomination, you have to have attended the conference. Uh, but this year, well, because of COVID and it's changed everybody's lives, we don't know whether there's a conference for next year. There will be a conference probably, but we don't know whether we're going to be able to meet in person or we'll be meeting like this. So we have made the rules slightly different. So it's easier. It opens it up across the world as well. Um, so make sure you get a nomination in if you know a great nanny who has really stepped up to the mark over the COVID era, um, especially as a lot of you have all had to do homeschooling. I did that earlier this year, can't say it was fun. So I, I, I sympathize with all those nannies in America who are now doing homeschooling because mine have all gone back to school because our schools have all reopened here in the UK. How long for? We don't know. Um, but yes, my other committees I chair are the service pins. If you have been a nanny, you can for 5, 10, 15, 20 and increments of five years after that, you can apply for service pins. These are normally given out at conference. But again, we changed it up this year and we had two rounds, ones that were meant to have been given out at conference, but of course we had to cancel due to COVID. And then we just had another round. So we awarded around 28 recipients this year with service pins. So if you um, do that, that's great. Uh, we're always looking for committee members. Please, if you have an hour to spare a week, or if you have a couple of hours a month, reach out to member services and they will fit you with one of the committees. We're all overworked at the moment. We're struggling. We really, really need some extra members on some of the committees. Um, we're a great team, but unfortunately, there are probably only 10 of us and we can't, we just can't do everything. Um, you know, we need a bit of help. We get burnout because most of us do work as nannies and we work the 12 hour days, 60 hour weeks. Um, and my other committee don't really have to do a lot with it at the moment. It's um, the raffle, which we raise money at conference because having no conference, we have no raffle. And normally we split the raffle um, money that we get and 50% goes to a local charity and 50% goes back into the INA to pay for scholarships to the INA conference. But anyway, that's enough about my, my board. Um, I'm going to hand over to Marsha just to give you a list of the upcoming events for INA um, in the next coming months. Hey everybody, 
Um, I am going to attempt to share my screen, I think. And it's not going to let me share my screen. <laughs> Why is it not letting me share my screen? <laughs> oh, wait a second. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Well, I'm just going to tell you guys what I put together. I put together this beautiful graphic, everybody, you guys. I actually did some work this morning. I'm sorry to, to uh, interrupt. Maybe Helen needs to hand over the. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, that might be it, Helen, because I think I made when I when I was having sound issues, I, I made you the admin or the host. Can you give that back to me? That might be the problem. Yeah, I think that was so. How do I do that? Thank Marcia? Thanks. Uh, so if you go to my name, if you find my name under the participants, Hit participants, find my name, and then it um, go to the little dot next to my no, name. It says, say, it says you're the host. All right. Well, then never. Oh, sharing. Wait, I think I figured it out. Can yeah. you guys see that? Brilliant. All right, I figured it out. <laughs> I am only on technology and Zoom like every single day. So, you know. Um, so, just to kind of give you guys a heads up about what's going on tomorrow. We have our Mentorship Monday. For those of you who are INA members currently, you can go to our INA membership uh, Facebook page, and we're going to be talking about best tips. So be, everybody gets to give their best tips for just about everything. Um, lots of different details. Um, it'll be kind of a fun day to kind of show your expertise on certain um, topics and that. Um, and then the next day, November 17th, we have our next diversity webinar, which is going to be taking a look at unconscious bias. And that is at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. So um, you can figure out the time time zone difference from wherever it is that you are. The, the, the good thing about that is if you can't make it in person, because it sounds like we have a lot of European members that'll be in the middle of the night for you, we are recording that. And so that will be available probably the following day um, in, in, on our YouTube channel, we'll share details about it on our Facebook page, on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. So if you can't make that in person, look for that on YouTube um, on November 17th. And then as Helen alluded to, we do have our Nanny of the Year nomination deadline coming up. So if you are interested in being nominated or you are interested in nominating somebody for that award, take a look. I put the uh, link to all the details in the chat bar. So that deadline is December 7th. Um, so it gives you kind of, if you're in the U.S., the holiday, the, the Thanksgiving holiday, but it gives you a couple of weeks to put that together. The nomination part of it is a pretty short process. It's just um, the person that's nominating you fills out some information. You as the nominee don't have to do anything yet. Um, but just kind of take a look at that website that I that I shared and make sure that you are eligible and then talk to somebody. Um, it, you know, sometimes it's hard to approach somebody, but you could approach another nanny friend, you could approach a, an agency that you've worked with. If you are an agency, take a look at some of your nannies and see who kind of rises to the top and who you might think would be a great nanny of the year and take a look. Um, at that. So, and then our next Zoom town hall is going to be December 14th at 2 p.m. again, Eastern Standard Time. Um, Emily, who's actually on the call right now, is going to be our highlight that, that day. And she's going to have, um, she's been working with a bunch of different people from all different countries all over the place, actually working on some translations. And she's going to introduce us to some of them. So, any questions on upcoming events at this point? No, I don't think I see. All right, great. I'll turn it back over to you. So this is where I come in. Uh, nice to see everyone today. Um, Helen, I'm going to ask you a few questions and um, I want to focus on your work with UK Nanny. Um, can you explain like what UK Nanny is and um, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Um, UK Nanny is a limited company um, because obviously our companies are limited. Um, in the US, they would be Inc., so incorporated. Um, UK Nanny um, was founded 
uh, let me think, three years ago now. Um, it came off the back of a collaboration with Sue Downey, who's on the call, um, when she allowed us to bring Nanny Palooza over to the UK, because you would think the UK is the home of nannying, which it is. But the problem is we don't have conferences. We don't have anything here for nannies. I was traveling since 2014 to the US to go to conference, to go to Nanny Palooza. And with going to Nanny Palooza, I found the INA. I then found International Nanny Training Day and all these wonderful events. So I stole all their ideas and I brought them to the UK. Um, <laughs> but, you know, our nannies, they do come. Um, Lauren has been to our conference as well. So we have our own conference at last in here and we are an accredited conference. We are the only accredited nanny conference in the world at present, um, which is great for us. Um, but yes, yeah, so UK Nanny, it's um, it's just, what well, it's me and a few other people. Um, Janet comes to our conferences. Janet, we've we've sort of stepped up and we did Zoom calls for, on a Friday for about three months after COVID hit because none of us were seeing each other and it gets very lonely as you all know when, it, when you're a nanny. So every Friday night with a glass of wine or whatever your tipple is in hand, we would meet up on Zoom. They'd last an hour to four hours long. <laughs> But, you know, so UK Nanny um, has its conference. It has an award ceremony. We don't just recognise nannies at our award ceremony. We recognise the industry that is nanny related as a whole. So we award the payroll companies. We, enroll, we reward our insurance companies. Um, it's all done by votes. It goes out to public vote. And with the, you vote for your nanny agency of the year, your UK Nanny of the year your payroll company, your insurance company, and then we do the best children's classes, the best library classes, all things that nannies go to, and this is all voted for by nannies. Um, our big idea this year got squashed, thanks to COVID yet again, but we did it all via Zoom, so we had a virtual awards ceremony. We had a few technical issues, as we always do, but we got through it. Um, we have also started, um, UK Nanny Matters campaign. Uh, this is a campaign that we are lobbying government to get nannies regulated because like the rest of the world, it is a not a regulated industry. Um, we want to see, you know, minimum standards of having first aid, having insurance, having a minimum qualification. Um, Department of Education in this country has sort of said you can't dictate to parents because you're in a private setting. So we're rethinking of our structure at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's sort of a bit about UK Nanny. Definitely. Um, and I've also been to the conference for the last uh, two years. Um, yeah. I regretfully didn't get to make the Nanny Palooza one uh, that Sue did. I totally regret that one because it looked like so much fun. Uh, for, to me, though, is I really enjoy how seeing there's so many people from all over um, Europe that also come to the conference. And I think last year we had uh, that you had, sorry, um, like at least 10 people from the United States that flew over for this yeah. one day conference. Um, and it was it was amazing to me to get to see um, and hear the excellent speakers and everything. And then of course, going out for dinner afterwards and you know, the camaraderie, I, I there's nothing like, I, you know how this is Janet, going out afterwards and having a drink and you know, everybody letting loose, you know. So. Yeah, or your person who organizes it then does a mad thing and goes from Heathrow Airport that night all the way to Santa Barbara in California to attend the INA board meeting. <laughs> 24 hours. Admit, as was we said no, jokingly, I could have flown to Australia in that time. <laughs> no, so I find it quite um, amazing to see um, how many countries have you had uh, um, representation have you had at conference? Um, let me think. So we've got the UK, we've got America, we've had the Netherlands, we've had Switzerland, we've had New Zealand, we've had Australia. So six to seven, maybe. Amazing. So what made you, um, what was the, the catalyst that made you want to start UK Nanny? Um, I know you've mentioned not having conferences and all of that, but was it the lack of camaraderie and education combined? Or was there one focal point that stood out to you with that? It's just that 
I'd had so much fun attending them in America and I just wanted, and not everybody can afford to fly to the US for a mad weekend um, because Nanny Palooza that I've gone to starts on a Friday afternoon and finishes Sunday lunchtime. So you get on a plane on, on, on Thursday night and you get end up there and you spend it and you're on that plane back and you land at Heathrow at six in the morning sometimes and you go back to work on the Monday. <laughs> Which, I've you done know, that. Yeah, it's like uh, madness, but I think that's also part of being a nanny. We're all slightly have a slight insane the insanity, to be honest. Um, I think that's how it know. works. <laughs> and also, when do we need to sleep? We don't sleep. Well, I, I, I will say I do need to sleep. As you know, everybody at your conference knows at this point, I do need to sleep. <laughs> But no, it, it was the lack of having everything. And I wanted people to be able to see what I could experience. And there are so many great speakers out there um, that cover a number of topics. And, you know, my network has grown so vastly thanks to Sue and Nanny Palooza and to INA. Um, and also it's interesting to see the differences. I mean, terminology like what we call furlough in the UK is slightly different to furlough in the US. It could be different in Switzerland. It could be different in the Netherlands. It seems to be a, a common word, but it means something slightly different. Um, and we've learned a lot more. And also, you know, you guys, you work the 40 hour week in the US and then you get time and a half. We'd love that here in the UK. That would be lovely. <laughs> Yeah, I find those things quite different. You know what I mean? Like hearing these differences, that's one reason why I really love going to your conference, Helen, is because I get to meet people from, you know, different countries um, all over Europe and the UK. And everything is, like you said, slightly different. And so it's a huge learning curve. And I mean, I find um, it's so much information and like it broadens your worldview mm -hmm. and it helps you understand what nannies are going through on a day-to-day -day basis in other countries and honestly, at the end of the day, we're really not that different. We have the same struggles and issues, just different um, areas that we're struggling in. Yeah, and it's it's just one way of bringing, as I say, bringing everybody together. And for us to get the conference CPD, which if you don't know what CPD stands for, it's Continued Professional Development. So it's you get a certificate, which is a proper you know, government certificate um, that says you've been to this conference, it's worth X amount of um, points towards university points to get into university. Um, and it's something we thought we'd offer. I'm not lying, it's not cheap to get that certificate, but we thought it was something that then set our conference slightly above any other conference. And to be honest, there aren't any nanny conferences in the UK. And as I say, for, you know, some nannies who are not on because wages like the US, they change from, from county to county. I mean, London, everybody thinks is really well paid. Yes, it is, but the price of living in London is very high. So when you're a daily nanny, most of your salary goes on rent, probably the same as New York, LA, and the more expensive states. Definitely in is, the US. definitely. <laughs> so no. yes, but no, it's, it's all about, I, you know, I've been a nanny for nearly 30 years now. Um, I qualified in 1991. Uh, my first little two are turning 31 and 30 next year. And then I have my little four who will be five by tomorrow uh, because my boss is having her new baby. Um, so, you know, I ha I've gone from having two little people who are now grown up, married and that. And I did 15 years of uh, maternity work, which obviously is related as NCS work. Um, and then I went back to Nanny and did that for a bit. and. Um, I won the nanny of the year of the INA in 2016. My boss nominated me because they were having a big discussion at Goldman Sachs about it. They didn't know anything about some, she didn't know about it. I had heard of it through INA. I was a member of the INA at the, at the time, but I was like, oh, no, probably not. Went in for it and I won. And to be honest, that has been my biggest stepping stone um, because it allowed me to you know, represent the INA, the international nanny industry. And um, I went all the way down to Australia to go to Nanny Palooza Australia for a week, which is madness to go to Australia for a week. But then there are other people on the call who also were there, uh, Teresa, Sue, and uh, that. But yes, we, 
you know, it gave me that it gave me that confidence boost as well um, of you can do this. And I think that's a big thing um, of knowing. And to be honest, you know, I used to be quite shy when I was a child, which people wouldn't believe that because I can now just get up in front of, a, of 500 people and talk. And it's it's absolutely fine. I'd love to see that, Helen, at this point. I'd love to see it. <laughs> what, 500 people? No, your shyness, because I don't Oh, my shyness. No, that's, that, that's <laughs> way gone. But I was the child who would hide behind my mum's legs. And, oh, that, and nobody believes it now. Jenna's doing the cut signals like that is never happening. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also it's being an only child. I don't have siblings. So it's being an only child. You sort of go into a shell and then you come out of that shell and it's just been given opportunities along the way um you know and I have also a very understanding husband who you know I've been with for nearly 25 years and he I met him when I was a living nanny and he's been on the journey as well he's he's quite a trooper um uh, he's quite a trooper through um um at y'all's recent escapades and having to be in such close quarters and doing an INA board meeting so we we thank him very much <laughs> and he's just in the room next door because people don't know I mean this is not where I normally live this is not my background um our ceiling fell fell through six weeks ago and uh, we're actually not living in our apartment so yes doing meetings and everything when you're in close proximity I sympathize with everybody who's had to do Zoom calls, homeschooling and working with their husbands, their bosses. We've all, it's all a completely different area now. Yeah, I, I owe Colin a few drinks at this point. But uh, anyways, I wanna open this up to our guests here and I would like to um, open it up and let them ask you some questions. Let's see, who would like to go first? Go for it, Mara. Yes, um, very interesting to know um, how is the life of uh, the life of nannies over there. Thank you for sharing and congratulate Helen for her uh, work, hard work lobbying the government for uh, regular regularization of our job. That's magnificent because it can be a spearhead for everybody. Like uh, when Los Angeles and New York was the first places to give you regulations about minimum age, uh, age wages for domestic works at large for everybody that work on the private of the house. So congratulations, Ellen, thank you very much. And so I am very curious, um, I am attending INA conference since 2010 and uh, INA uh, changed my life. As I said, I came from Brazil and there nanny is not a job. As housekeepers, they are nothing, and they are the bottom of the bottom. Uh, any just people that doesn't have any chance on the uh, job market, no education, becomes a housekeeper and a nanny. So when I came to US with this background, with this viewing of what a nanny is, working as a nanny, although I have my background education as a teacher, and I love to do that. So I was working as a nanny, very, very happily making good, good money. However, I have this stigma that I was doing nothing, that it was not a job. My mom worked so hard to give me uh, education and I was doing just very low pay, uh, payment, uh, very low end job. So when I met INA, I was very proud and changed my life. So I think an INA as well. But my question is uh, along the way, I learned that in UK, you have college for nannies. Is that true? As you go for teacher, nurse, you can go for nanny. Is that true? Yes, we have. We used to have quite a few specific nanny colleges. I mean, the most famous one is Norland. Uh, yeah. And that has, yeah. Everybody, I mean, people go, are you a Norland nanny? It's like, no, couldn't really afford to be a Norland nanny. Not, it is now a degree course. Um, so it used to be exactly the same as the NNEB, which is the qualification I hold, um, which was a two year course, uh, five days a week, uh, term time only. And you would study um, nine to five, uh, three weeks in college, three weeks out of college. So on the three weeks out, you'd go on placements um, and that. 
then the Norland nannies, in order to get their Norland diploma, had to then go and spend a year in a family and live in as a living nanny, and then they wow. would become they call Norlanders. So theirs was three years. This is all changed now. It's now a degree course. Um, it's a whole new level. Um, but you can still do the cash level three diploma in childcare over here. And there used to be the Prince, the Princess Christian nannies, Chiltern College. Janet, I'm going to call on you. Are there any others I'm missing? Not at the top of my head. I mean, I, I got my qualification through the local college at night school. So I did. I went to college one night a week and did a NVQ level two, which is the same as, 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 as Helen, um, which I did a diploma in it, which turns out to be the same as you, Helen. Um, but I don't think there's any more, but usually there's a lot of colleges around the UK that do it and the P I got mine through the PLA which is the old preschool learning alliance Helen so I that's how I got my qualification and that had a big core group in this area in North Yorkshire and and you know quite a lot over the country but that mm. got dissolved because yeah. money yeah so there's a lot to money but it's, there's a lot of local colleges that do it all over the UK it's just depending on one but the main one is is Norland yeah yeah wow that's amazing it's, and you, thank it's you very expensive course to to do wow. so, I mean I would love to have done it but just money was just too expensive so I see it's like you're going to Harvard right Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, basically, exactly. yes, it is, yeah. But wow, it's amazing. And then the qualified in doing, we basically did the Norland course, I would say, Helen. We covered all the course the coursework that they would have done, you know. So, yeah. so yeah, you, know you are to, equally qualified. How to smock? I mean, <laughs> smocking. I mean, I've used it once in my whole nanny career. Had to had to patch a dress that was completely smocked, and that, and I, well, I. But then I had a great granny who was um, a seamstress, so I had I, a slight unfair advantage. Wow! I had a mom as well, so I know how to do that. <laughs> I, my my qualification was more on the ethos of learn through play, so it was more set in like daycare and nurseries and things like that. So, but we, you know, you did learn. I learned more of the practical, personal side of being a nanny from some of my jobs and past and my my school education because we do uh, childcare in schools as well so I we did that in high school so you know that's how that's how I got my qualification and you know so learning to you know like we made play day but we also did the psychology side of it and everything else so you know so yeah so it was a mixture of of groups well, and I think that's the start of um, mm -hmm. acknowledging an industry is wanting to make yeah. sure that there's an education mm -hmm. platform across the country for it. Um, we have a long ways to go in the United States for that. <laughs> Anyways, great question, Mara. Um, let's go on to the next one. Thank you. Thank um, you for a beautiful answer. Thank you. Very clarifying. Thank you. Do we have another question? You can take yourself off mute if you do and or raise your hand, whatever it's however you want to do this. So <laughs> okay, we'll we'll go on then. Um, for me, I want to talk to you about the UK Nannies Matter campaign. Um, what was the basis of that campaign? How is it going forward? What progress are you making through COVID with it? It came off COVID. Without COVID, we probably wouldn't have got our acts together because as we all say, you know, you work five days a week as a nanny and and then you devote your whole weekend to being a nanny, um, but you're not with the children, you're devoting it to every other nanny in the country. And we started getting messages um, saying, I've got this problem with COVID, I've got this, I've got that. And we were just like, how do we tackle it? Um, so there were four of us. Um, Maria Cully, who I thought might be on the call, but she's not, um, who is a nanny, myself, 
Ali Bell, who used to. Uh, Maria own... is trying to get in, just so you know. I, oh, I, okay. She's struggling somehow. I keep seeing her pop up, and I admit her, and then she disappears. She disappears. So I'm just trying to get her in, just so you know. Okay. Um, Ali Bell, who was an, who actually won the uh, UK uh, Nanny Agency of the Year in 2019 and Laura Helfield, who spoke at our conference. Um, and then Laura had to step back due to uh, some family reasons. So basically the campaign is headed up by Ali, myself and Maria. Um, and we just got together over COVID because we'd all got time to talk and time's a big thing. And you don't feel like, you know, you're not at work because you can't be at work. So we all managed to get together, talked on Zoom and started working out what the aims of a campaign should be. And we can't believe that parents entrust us the, with their most precious item. It's an item that if we break it, we can't replace it. If I crack the min vase or the Tiffany vase and that, we can replace it, the insurance will pay out. But if I break the child, it's not going to get covered. Um, it also, we had a terrible case in the UK a few years ago where an au pair was murdered. Um, that really uh, was a big thing here. Um, I don't want to go into details. It's pretty horrific. Those people who were the employers are in jail now. They have been tried um, and were found guilty. But it was also the protection. There's no protection out there. So we sort of got together, brainstormed and said, what can we come up with? Um, and basically, we've said nannies need to be have a basic level of training. We're not saying you've got to be a Norlin nanny because we haven't all got 30, 40, however many thousands of pounds it costs to train. Um, but they just need a basic skill. Um, first aid. I don't understand how a parent can hire a nanny who doesn't know basic first aid. Um, you might, I mean, you could put me on the spot and ask me a first aid question and I'll probably go, Ugh! but if I'm thrown into the situation, we all know what to do immediately. Maria um, made it in by the way. Ah, great. Um, so, so yeah, having basic first aid, um, which is slightly different I, because when I lived in the US, I tried to do a first aid course and they were all online, which really confused me at the time. And this is talking about 10 to 12 years ago, um, because in the UK, ours are all in person. They are 12 hours long, some of them. So we do two days of first aid to get a first aid certificate, which is then valid to become Ofsted registered, which is a whole new thing in the UK for nannies. So you can be this Ofsted nanny. It's a regulation that the um, government, but it's not the right governing body for nannies because they govern the schools and the nurseries and nannies are a different thing. We, we play by a different set of rules really because we have an employer and we don't have a body governing us. Um, and then we sort of was like, we were like, right, what else do nannies need? Um, and the big thing, one of the big differences in the UK is we can get insurance as a nanny. We can have liability insurance, which doesn't cost that much. It's about a hundred pounds, depending on whether you're a living nanny or a daily nanny and you want your stuff insured. So I'm the person who then has the premium because I insure everything. My phone's insured, my laptop's insured, I'm insured, the children are insured. They're insured to be in my car if I have to use my car. Um, but I understand there is a company in the US, but it's $500 plus, where ours would turn out to be about $130. Um, and we know that the insurance company here in the UK, they're part of a bigger insurance company and they are looking to go to the US and see where, what they can provide over there because they understand there is a need for liability nanny insurance. Come on, do it. <laughs> So you, you, we're going to take on the world, you know, you'll, you'll be fed up of the Brits by, by the end. Um, Do you remember who I am, Helen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the hair change, yes, I still know who you are. <laughs> but it's all, um, so we've started to lobby government. We have an MP who's great. <coughs> who's really on board with us. He's, he's also with the party that's in power here. So we have backing there. We have a lot of companies that are backing us as well with our campaign. And is Maria still on? Because I can't. 
don't know whether she's oh she's there she can talk about the campaign a bit for me while I take a drink because <laughs> Maria Cully is the other part of UK Nanny and also um, UK Nannies Matter unmute oh hi everyone we got over the technical difficulties thank you Marsha for finally letting me in it kept saying I was in a waiting room and I gave up after 15 minutes um thanks for sorting that so yes the UK Nanny Matters campaign um obviously Helen has already partly introduced that there is another lady called Ali she's also part of the campaign and considering we've been going six months we've managed to do quite a lot Considering for in six months, you think, you know, what can you do in that time? But we've got over a thousand signatures on a petition. Um, we've had various press coverage on it across the UK, um, from local newspapers to the Lady magazine. So it's gone pretty well. Um, we have had three correspondence letters back from Parliament. Um, are we happy with what they've said? No, we're not. Um, but we knew everything's going to take a lot longer than six months. But we are well on our way of raising the profile for nannies not just in the UK, but internationally as well, um, because if we can get this through, we can get the standard across everywhere. Thank you. Yeah, so that's sort of what the UK nannies matter. And if you hop over to our website, uh, which is uh, www.uknanny.org, you can read about the campaign in a lot more depth than I can give you in a few minutes. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, anyways, <laughs> so what would be, you say, your biggest um, differences between um, the US and the UK? What would be like number one, I, as you've worked in the United States as well, in Florida, um, so you have these comparisons to make. Um, I mean, I've been over to England many times, but it still doesn't compare to working in both places. Um, I think one of the biggest things is, as I said, is you, yours. And I gather it, it is nationwide, isn't it? The 40 hour, you work the 40 hours, then you get the, then you get overtime. You don't get that here. You work your basic rate standard and you get paid. You either get paid by the hour or you get a weekly salary. Um, most uh, live-ins have a uh, weekly salary. So they're salaried um, and that, involves uh and then the other thing that's really different is tax and national insurance here obviously we don't have private medical because we have the nhs who are, are wonderful and that's the one thing i've got to say that's probably the biggest thing that's the difference between the us and the uk we have free health care um i don't have to worry if i hurt myself i'm not going to think am i going to eat or do i pay my medical bill uh because i just walk over to the hospital and i go and i would be treated um that's something that you know i will never ever forget because i know you guys have to pay such high medical bills and everything with health insurance i mean we can have private health insurance here if we want but we don't have to and tax we don't have to fill in when you're employed as a nanny you don't do an end of year tax return so that was quite interesting um when i worked in florida but um good old turbo tax that helped me a lot um and um so th yeah that's that's really you know standard hours i mean contracts are contracts um whatever you have in them another big thing is we get more holidays than you do yes totally drives me insane totally. yeah we have basically you get more vacation time as well yeah like, um, yeah so i mean it's four I weeks mean, get, four weeks yeah. standard plus all our bank holidays that's what i was gonna say but don't you guys have like 11 bank holidays a year somewhere in, around in there and you have an extra one this next year we do have extra ones next year yes because, way to go for the jubilee yes because the our queen if she um doesn't go um die or anything will have served for 70 years on the throne so That's they're having a huge crossed. they changed our bank holiday from the end of may to the first week of june so there will be celebrations of a long weekend covid permitting <laughs> hopefully so by that point in june. hopefully so by that yeah. point so there's we're me we're telling everybody i can't do these dates which was obviously board and everything um because we should have been on a bank holiday i can do those dates now so um, i can change <laughs> my plans 
but this is what happens with our government they do this they just throw out but yes we do get more because i tell you what if i could only have 10 days holiday a year i don't know how you guys do that <laughs> i believe Rachel a question. Question. Yeah. yeah so we do essentially have federal holidays or bank holidays mm. but not but it's not required to give nannies those days off in fact most nannies work most of those days yeah um, and so in in the UK, if there are bank holidays, is that is it just assumed that nannies will have those days off? Yeah, pretty much. It's it's actually it's actually if you have to work it, you get a day off in lieu. So or basically, so basically, um, or or you get paid for it. Um, if you work it, you can t you either it will become a bank holiday or a day off in lieu. So is this something also that you don't have to put in a contract? It's just understood. No, you, you, you would you would it's have it in a contract that you are, are entitled to. It's something like 5.5 .5 weeks holiday per year. How um, lucky. And most, and most um, nannies will have, they will choose two weeks and the employer would choose two weeks just so that it's slightly fairer. I mean, some of us, we all go, no, we're choosing all four weeks of our holiday. I don't know many nannies that the employer dictates all four weeks. We have to ask, obviously, you can't just go, right, I'm booking my holiday now, then I'm going to ask them whether it's convenient. You should, we always make sure it's convenient for them. And that obviously they have the right to say, no, you can't go on holiday at that particular time because we can't find cover or whatever it is. So is it also standard to also have backup care um, in the UK? Um, is that something that your task with finding or does the parents automatically have you know that set sec, set second set um i know in the states um it really varies typically a lot of people don't have backup and then they expect you to work you know miracles and walk on water so when that time comes so that's a question i have for you personally no we don't have backup care um you know if you're a living nanny it's probably worse if you're sick and you probably will um carry and continue work um i know when i lived in i did i mean i had to be literally on death's door not to work um obviously when you're a daily nanny if you don't feel well before you're going in you just phone in and let them know um and then i mean depending on the nature of your employer's job will depend i mean uh as one lady I worked for worked for Goldman Sachs so they had daycare in the thing so she just took her daughter with her if I was ever sick which gives you a slightly bit more relief because you'll you can make that decision of I know there's backup care I don't have to go into work um but no most of us will probably just soldier on regardless you know unless we are absolutely on death's door definitely that was just uh, something I was a bit curious about um so what does the campaign look like it's going to come? Like what's your next steps in this campaign with UK Nanny Matters? Maria, do you want to go? Go on, you can go first. I don't know what you've already said. <laughs> I haven't said anything. Um, next steps is basically, um, we, as Maria said, we've had, we've had three responses back from the Department of Education and it's just formulating a, um, the next step plan of what we want to do um and how to go about that and and respond back to their points which are valid points i mean yes government cannot dictate to a parent you have to have this particular nanny because they're on this register and everything um so i think it's going to be more like parents need to be educated into the various levels of nannies because we have au pairs um we have junior nannies we have what they call mother's helps we have nannies you have head nannies you have governesses there is more than just nanny um, and then you've got nannies who have qualifications you have nannies who don't have qualifications and we were going to and we're trying to get a fair pay scale like in you know other jobs in the city there is a level of of going in you don't go in on top dollar you work your way up even in the retail industry, you start maybe filling the shelves in a supermarket and one day you may be the manager of that market, but you're not going to get paid the same. Um, and that's I think that's a big frustration to a to a lot of nannies um, is is a pay scale um, is to think, well, 
And this is why we always say, please do not discuss what you get paid um, because that's when stuff really gets out of hand. Um, because somebody who like myself, I have a qualification. I've been in the game nearly 30 years. I shouldn't technically be paid somebody who's only been doing it for five years, but sometimes I don't want those top dollar jobs because I always think they come with extra problems. Um, I'm happy as long as it covers my bills, I'm happy at what I get paid. Definitely. Do you want to follow up? To yes. Do you want to follow up, Maria, with what um, your thoughts are, what the next steps are? Yeah, sure. So at the moment, um, my MP is quite my MP is heavily involved. Um, we are we've got a catch up meeting in the next couple of weeks with him, but obviously we can't do any of it in person. It's all via Zoom because of COVID. Um, which in a way, I think COVID has highlighted the vulnerability of nannies and the nanny industry. Um, there's obviously, there's been nannies, unfortunately, that have less, lost their lives due to COVID. There have nannies that have been forced to work whilst someone in their working family have got COVID. And I think it's highlighted that nannies are actually a very vulnerable industry, a very vulnerable section that needs to be empowered and giving the nannies the voice to actually stand up and say, this isn't right. Um, you know, I should be paid legally. Why am I not being paid legally? I'm a professional, which is why we want to come up with this pay scale and also giving those in the industry, wherever they're coming into the industry, the recognition that it is an industry, it is a profession and like the likes of the INA, you can join the INA and the INA will recognise you as a professional. That's why the association's there. We like being part of UK Nanny, like there is something for nannies. We've had a lot of nannies come to us going, oh, you know, COVID has highlighted the fact that we're not treated as professionals and want to leave the industry. So it's also providing that support and highlighting there is support for nannies, whether it's through the campaign, whether it's through the INA, through UK Nanny and, you know, different group networks on Facebook, but you're not alone. It doesn't matter if you're in the UK, Australia, the US, you know, there is a community for you. And we've all chosen this as our professional industry for a reason, and we're there to support each other. Definitely. I think that's been a highlight across from, you know, every country. They're finding out who their essential workers are. And it was the people that they didn't really quite take seriously before this pandemic. Um, it's the child care workers. It's the nurses, the doctors. It's the postal workers. It's delivery guys for Amazon. And it's um, shopkeepers and all of that. Things that people thought were menial jobs now have what's kept the world running. Um, and we knew that before this ever hit, but now it's just highlighted this for the rest of the world. Um, so I, I think in some ways, um, well, it's driven everyone to distraction. COVID has been a great thing to highlight our industry and show how indispensable and valuable that we are across the world, you know, because um, I've said this before, if we don't go to work, the entire world doesn't go to work. And that was really highlighted uh, with this pandemic. So I think it's very interesting, you know, that, you know, me as an American can see from uh, various countries and cultures and everything that it still runs the same. Um, it, no matter where you live, it's still an a highly uh, prioritized um, industry, it has to be. So, you know, we have to remember we are um, raising the next generation, we are shaping this future and it's just been highlighted even more so for us all. So um, what is something that I have not covered um, in asking today, Helen, that we, you would like people to know about UK Nanny or yourself or what you do? Um, no, I think we've covered everything. Um, as we said, if you're an INA member, you get a 20% discount to any event that we hold. Um, we give that to INA members. So um, it's just a discount that we offer. So if you fancy coming over to a conference, um, please do. It should be held next year in October. We're hoping, um, I must say, I have to say the Hilton was fab. They uh, rolled our contract to next year. Um, so we haven't incurred any extra costs. Um, and, you know, we welcome anybody. Um, just because we're called UK Nanny, it doesn't mean we're only for the nannies in the UK. We are happy to answer questions. And if we can't answer them, I'm sure we can find somebody who can, um, mainly because I have the INA uh, directory at dis my disposal, so I can push people to whoever they need. So if you feel you have an INA question, you know, any of the board members can help, 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 
happy to help. If you have a specific answer with the question for the UK, I mean, we have a big challenge actually happening January the 1st, and that is because our, we will have Brexited. <laughs> Probably not quite the right word, but Brexit has happened and we will be out of Europe by the 1st of January, which is a big game for all the Europeans that are living um, in the UK because the laws are changing. Um, we're uh, working uh, hopefully with the Au Pair um, Association. Association in the, U in the UK um, because uh, the laws are changing for Au Pairs in the UK and it will probably become like Au Pair America. Um, so it's probably going to become like that. They won't, you won't just be able to walk into the UK and just work as an Au Pair now from Europe because the UK is technically out of Europe. Well, so I that's know a whole new thing time. that we're all gonna be. Definitely, and I think that's gonna take some time for you know Britain to figure out what they need, what they want. And so I think those changes will be even a few years down the road, um, fully cemented. Although we've been talking about Brexit for years. Um, and so is the UK. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, it's been a part of my conversation, you know, because of various reasons, but um, I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens with that. And I look forward to discussing that more with you later on. And if there's no other questions, um, if you have, say now, if not, we can say goodbye and uh, thank you for joining this meeting. Thank you for putting this meeting together. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. Nice way to wake up. Thank you guys for joining. Really enjoyed seeing all your lovely faces. So Have thank a good you. Day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you. Nice meeting everyone. <laughs>